Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna dive deep into some nighttime photography edits. So let's jump right in and let's get started. So for our first edit, let's jump into this photograph here. Now, this is going to be a relatively easy edit, but I think it's going to open up some doors creatively as far as modifying nighttime exposures. So the first thing I wanna do with this shot is just talk a bit about the exposure here. Now, I actually honestly wish I would have shot this a little bit more exposed. If I look at my info, I, for my camera settings, I used an ISO of 50, I had a shutter speed of 30 seconds, and I had an aperture of 1.4. I was shooting in manual, so this, uh, disregard this exposure value. On the back of the camera, it was actually telling me it was less exposed than that. It was actually telling me it was negative two, but I didn't see that until I was actually on my last photograph from this scene. Just, again, harkens back to looking at the back of the camera, knowing your camera settings. Uh, not a huge deal that I shot it really underexposed. We can always pull out some of these tonalities and it actually kind of pops this Milky Way, not the Milky Way, sorry, the, the Big Dipper back here that I was ultimately trying to get within the shot. So we do have a good area of stars up here that we can play with, and we have a nice foreground that we can pull out and open up with our tone and color. So not a huge deal that I shot it underexposed, but again, I really wish I would have shot it a little more exposed just for post-processing techniques. But if I go back to my shutter speed, the reason that I was using a 30 second shutter speed is because I wanted to keep my ISO down as far as I could possibly keep it. And that just allows for less grain, less noise on the image, and just make sure that whatever tones that I need to pull up, whenever I pull up on those tones, I'm not gonna get anything in those areas. It's just gonna be pure detail and purely what I need to have in that image. And then I was shooting at f1.4, and that also, again, was just allowing me to keep my ISO as low as possible. I wish I would have gone in and raised my ISO up a bit to maybe 400 or 200 just so that I could bring up the brightness of my exposure. But again, not a huge deal. I can always go in here to my tone and color and start modifying these tonalities because I shot this in RAW. So first things first, I just want to open up the shadow tones in the shot and just brighten things up. I'm gonna use a camera profile to do that. I'm just gonna click on my camera profile menu and I'm gonna head down to on one neutral. Now, on one neutral is just one of my favorite camera profiles for opening things up within my image. I think it neutralizes things and gives you a better sense of what you're looking at within your scene. So now inside of my tone and color area, I'm gonna pull up on my exposure a little bit just to bring up the exposure that I was more looking for when I shot this image. So let's do about 0.4, that looks pretty good for my shot. Now I'm gonna head down to my contrast slider and I'm actually gonna pull that back a little bit. And I'm pulling it back so I can open up some of these dark tones within the shot. And I can always add contrast back into my scene with my black slider or a tone enhancer or a curves filter, but for now I'm just gonna pull that back so I can see what I'm working with. And I think my horizon line is a bit crooked, so I'm gonna hit C on my keyboard. I'm gonna head up to my top tool modifier bar. I'm gonna choose this leveling tool. And then I'll just drag it across a horizon line here. And it straightens it out just like that. Then I think I can just drag in on these corners a little bit. I'll maybe move this over. Pull that up, that's a little too much. And that's just gonna place this rule of thirds on this Big Dipper area within the sky, just to make sure that it's a point of interest for the scene. So then I'll just hit enter on my keyboard. So now let's head over to our tone and color pane and I'm gonna pull up on my shadow tones now. And that's just gonna pull up on those darker tones within my scene. Then I'll head down and I'll pull up on my whites And that's gonna make sure that all the whites pop within the shot. Basically, it's making sure that these whites in the sky and the whites within the snow don't look flat and they have a little bit of brightness to them. But for right now, let's just leave this how it is. I think it looks pretty good as far as just a foundational exposure goes. Let me go up to my levels so that we can see what we're working with. And again, it's a really dark exposure, but we do have some of our midtones coming to life in our scene now. So now let's go in to our effects tab here. I'm gonna add a filter and the filter I want to add on 
is a black and white filter. Now I'm not adding on the black and white filter to convert this image to a black and white. Rather, I'm adding on this black and white filter so that I can completely control specific tones within my shot. So before we do that, let's actually head into our develop tab and I'm gonna go back down to my color area. And I forgot to do this. I'm just gonna warm my image up a bit by just grabbing my temperature and just pulling that to the right just to add in a little bit more natural color to this foreground scene. So now let's head into the effects tab. I'll add a filter and let's add that black and white filter. Now I don't again want to convert this to black and white. I just want to use these color response sliders in here to modify the brightness of those tones. So let's head up to our gear icon here. I'm going to choose that gear icon to go into my blending options. And then for my mode, I'll head down to luminosity. And because I'm choosing luminosity, it's not going to modify any of the colors within my shot and it's not going to convert it to black and white. It's only going to apply these black and white or this black and white filter to the tonalities within my shot. Basically, it's going to modify the brightness of specific tones, but it's not going to modify the colors. So inside of this black and white filter, I'm going to head down and I'll go to that blue slider here and I'll just pull this back. And just like that, we're really darkening up our sky and that's bringing out a lot more of these whites and really pulling up and making this Big Dipper pop. So let's pull that up a little bit more, probably about right there. But now if I turn off this black and white filter, you can see it does an awesome job at just darkening those blue tones. So now let's pull up on our yellows and our greens and that's gonna pull up on the tones within these trees. So now if I turn off this black and white filter, I think that's doing a lot better job at making our stars pop in the night sky. So now let's go into our develop tab again, and I'm gonna head into my tone and color, and I'm gonna go down to my contrast, and I'm gonna add in a little bit of contrast. Maybe like that. And then I'm going to pull up on my shadows a little bit more. So now all I'm going to do just to make things punch a little bit is I'm going to go into my effects here. I'm going to add a filter and I'm going to add my tone enhancer filter. And in the tone enhancer filter, I'm going to go to my more and I'm going to go down to mid-tone contrast boost, just like that. So now if I turn this thing off and on, there's a good job of adding in contrast to those mid-tone areas. But let's head back into our shadows and let's pull those up a bit more. And we could even go in and add a little bit more contrast. And we'll pull up on our whites as well. Right about there. So now if I turn this off and on, It does a great job of adding in contrast to this mountain here, but it doesn't go up and crunch up our night sky. So if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard now, our exposure is looking a lot better and more natural than it was before. I mean, obviously it was a really underexposed image, but the scene looks more like it did when I was standing there at 1221 in the morning. So now let's do one last thing to the shot I'm going to go into my local adjustments and I'm going to go to my local adjustment layer here and I'm going to rename this star pop because I'm going to use this to make my stars pop in the Big Dipper here. I'm just going to hit Z on my keyboard to zoom in and I'm only focused on the stars in the Big Dipper. So I'm going to head to my star pop local adjustment. I'm going to use this more and I'm going to go down to detail and then I'm going to pull up on my whites, my contrast all the way, pretty much. I'm going to pull up on my midtones a bit and maybe a little bit more structure. All I'm really trying to do here is just make these little stars pop out of the Big Dipper. So I'm just going to hit K on my keyboard now. I'm going to head up to my top toolbar. I'm going to use my feathering at 100, my opacity at 100. And then I'm just going to make my brush size just about the size of these stars. 
You don't want it way bigger because then you're gonna have a little halo, but right about there is about perfect. Maybe even one step lower right there. So then I'll just paint on there. Same thing with this one. And that one. And right there. And then right there. And then right there. And then we'll go to the last star. I'll zoom out. And now if we head over to our star pop local adjustment, I'm just gonna pull up on my exposure so we can see what we're doing to these stars. And then if I turn off the star pop local adjustment, see how it makes those stars really pop out from the night sky. And we can always lower the opacity. So I'll just lower the opacity down all the way and then I'll just incrementally pull it up and I think that looks pretty good about 74. So let's just turn this off and on. Perfect, I think that looks really good for just popping out that Big Dipper in that night sky right there. So now let's just hit the backslash key on our keyboard. And there we go. A really easy way to just pull out the tonalities within an underexposed nighttime photograph and then make your stars pop and just add in a little bit more liveliness to your night sky and your nighttime exposure.